going to be looking at Podman networking specifically host mode networking. So before we jump into the actual demo itself, let's just kind of lay the groundwork here. So um, first off, we should mention that all the source material that we're going over here, they're using Podman version 5.3.1, mm. and this was built on November 21st, 2024. And so if, if you're following along at home, you can check your Podman version by typing Podman version in your terminal. Yeah. And you know, make sure that you're using a similar version so that all the commands will work as expected. Exactly. Yeah. And it's also probably good to mention um, that Podman uses Netavark as like the back end to manage all these different network modes, huh. unlike older versions that use CNI. So Netavark is kind of like the brains of the operation. Yeah, here. it's the traffic controller. It's making sure all the packets are flowing to the right places and the right containers can talk to each other in the outside world. Yeah, and Podman has a bunch of different network modes, right? There's like Rich mode, McFlan, Iplan, and yeah. even Pasta, which I don't even know what that is. Yeah, that one always throws me off too. But um, for this episode, we're just going to be focusing on host mode. And host mode is pretty unique in that it allows a container to share the host's network namespace. Okay, so the container essentially becomes part of the host. Right. It's like the container is plugged directly into the host's network interface. Oh, so there's no like separate network namespace for the container. Exactly. Interesting. Okay, so that sounds kind of powerful, but also maybe a little bit scary. Yeah, there are definitely some security implications to consider. Like what? Well, since the container is sharing the host's network namespace, mm. it has direct access to all the host's network resources. Okay, so anything that can connect to the host can also connect to the container. Exactly. Yeah. So you need to be extra careful about what you're running in host mode. Right, so probably not something you would want to use in like a production environment without really thinking it through. Right. It's best suited for specific use cases where performance is critical or security is less of a concern, like maybe for development or testing. OK, so with that in mind, let's actually see how this host mode works in practice. The source material has a cool demo using the k.iolib pod banner image. Yeah, it's a pretty simple image. It just runs a web server and displays a podman banner. Kind of like the hello world of podman. Exactly. All right, so they start by running the banner image in a regular container just to show that it works as expected. And the command they use is podman run adit name banner k.iolib pod banner. Right. So breaking that down, podman run is the command to launch a container. The didit flags tell podman to run the container detached in the background interactively and allocate a pseudo TTY. The name banner part is just giving the container a friendly name. And finally, key.iolib pod banner is specifying the image we want to use. Okay, that makes sense. And then they use podman exec, a banner curl localhost, to actually test if the web server is working. Right, Podman exec lets you run commands inside a running container. So in this case, they're using curl localhost to try to access the web server running inside that container. And if you see the Podman banner, you know everything's working. Exactly. Now, things get more interesting when we switch over to host mode. Yeah. So to run the container in host mode, they use this command. Podman run, I didn't name, host container network, host key.iolib pod banner. Okay, so the key difference here is the network host flag. Right, that's what tells Podman to run the container in host mode. Got it, and then to double check that the container is actually running in host mode, they use this command. Mm -hmm. Podman container inspect host container grep network mode. This command is just looking at the container's configuration to see what network mode it's using. Huh. And the output should say host. Cool. So now for the moment of truth, they use Podman to list all the running containers. They check the container's logs using Podman logs host container. Okay. And there it is. The error message gives us a clue. It's a permissions issue. It seems like the container is trying to bind to port 80. Which is a privileged port. Exactly. And it's running as a non-root user. So it doesn't have the right permissions to use that port. Right. It's like trying to enter a VIP area without a pass. You need the right credentials. Makes sense. So how do they fix this? Well, they run the container as the root user using sudo. Ah, uh, so that gives it the necessary privileges. Exactly. Okay. The command becomes sudo podman run day name host container to network host key .iolib pod banner. Okay, so that sudo at the beginning is important. Very important. That elevates the permissions. Got it. So now they can use sudo podman prees to check if the container is running. Right. And this time it should be running without any issues. Hopefully. To 
to really see what's special about host mode, they then inspect the container's network configuration using sudo podman exec at host container 2 IPA. What does that command do? It lists all the network interfaces inside the container. And here's the interesting part. You'll see that the container is inheriting the host's IP address. Wait, really? So it's not using a separate IP address? Nope. It's using the same IP address as the host machine. So it's like the container is completely blended in with the host from a networking perspective. Exactly. They're sharing the same network identity. Wow, that's pretty cool. But remember, this also means that anything that can connect to the host can also connect to the container. Right because they're essentially the same machine from the network's point of view. Exactly, so security is a big concern with host mode. Got it. So how do they actually test the connectivity? Well, first they try curl localhost. Which should work because the container is running on the host itself. Right, localhost always refers to the current machine. And then they try curl, followed by the host's actual IP address. Exactly, which in their case is 192.168.178. And does it work? It does. Both commands successfully connect to the container's web server and they see the Podman banner. Awesome. So host mode really does make the container part of the host network? It does, but again, it's important to remember the security implications. Right, you're essentially giving the container full access to the host network. Exactly, so use it with caution. Okay, so we've seen how host mode works and we've talked about some of the pros and cons. What's next? So yeah, host mode is a very powerful tool, but you have to be very careful about when and how you use it. For sure. Okay. Oh, so we've covered host mode pretty extensively, Yeah. Um, but SRK Master Stack has a lot more than just host mode, right? Like they go into a bunch of other network modes. Yeah, they do. What's next on the agenda? Well, I think the next logical step would be to look at McVlan mode. McVlan. Okay, so remind me again, what exactly is McVlan? So McVlan is a network mode that allows containers to have their own MAC addresses and appear as physical devices on a network. So it's like each container gets its own network card. Exactly. Hmm, interesting. So when would you actually use McVlan mode? Well, it's often used when you need to integrate containers more directly with a physical network. Okay. Like, for example, if you want to connect a container to a specific VLAN, you would use MacLAN. So it's a way to make containers look and act like regular machines on the network? Yeah, basically. It allows you to bypass the whole NAT situation that you usually have with containers. Right, because normally containers are behind a NAT, so they don't have their own public IP addresses. Exactly. But with McFlan, each container gets its own MAC address and can be assigned its own IP address on the physical network. Okay, that makes sense. So it sounds like McFlan is a pretty powerful tool for certain use cases. It is. It can be very useful for things like legacy applications that expect to be directly connected to a network or for scenarios where you need to isolate containers from each other at the network level. Right. So it's not just about connecting to the outside world. It can also be used for internal networking between containers. Exactly. Cool. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to diving into McFlan mode and seeing how it all works. Me too. It's a really fascinating topic. Awesome. Okay. So to wrap up our deep dive on Podman's host mode, I think the main takeaway is that it's a powerful way to give a container direct access to the host's network. Right, but it comes with security risks, so you have to use it carefully. Exactly. Host mode is not a one-size-fits-all solution. It's a tool that should be used strategically for specific use cases. I completely agree. Great. Well, thanks for joining me on this deep dive into Podman networking. It was my pleasure. And to our listeners out there, be sure to tune in next time when we'll be exploring the world of McFlan mode. We'll see you then. Until next time, happy Podmanning.